stepped on a few toes and then F with. The toes he was stepping on that particular occasion were those of the local dissenters. He spoke out against them from the pulpit for refusing to accept the forms and doctrines of the established church, and they took issue with him, decided to make him pay for it. But, you see, they were too cowardly to face my father by day, so they did their deeds by night. First of all, they burned our crops. Then they killed our hogs and our chickens. And then they went so far as to hamstring our horses, making them completely useless. But this did not dissuade my father. He continued to speak out against them from the pulpit, and they were driven by the very devil to set fire to the house in which we all And he reached, and he reached, and he was just able to reach my small hand and snatch me to safety. And no sooner was I safely on the ground than the entire roof collapsed. The great roar. Oh, I clung to that stranger, sobbing uncontrollably. And when he sought to release me into the arms of another man, I resisted until I realized that man was my father. And I thought his great arms would crush me as he held me close. And he said, come neighbors, let us kneel down and give thanks unto God. For he has given me all my children. My brother Charles has been having great success forming what he called the Holy Club. A group of students, well they were called other things by the other students. They were called the Bible Mods and the Bible Bigots. And it's a term of derision by those Methodists. Because of the methodical way that they met for prayer and Bible study every day. Well, I returned discouraged, and my brother saw to it that I was elected leader of this body. And so we 17 souls, we sought to commit ourselves and our meager resources to the plight of the poor on the streets and in the prisons. And after six happy years in that service, I must say, well, I, I was ready to move on. Now, I would not have admitted it at the time, but I think perhaps my wanderlust was more personal than providential. You see, I've been serving the Lord for approximately a quarter of a century, and I thought I'd been doing it as well as, as some, perhaps better than some. But in the past several years, I've become inexplicably and, and, and increasingly restless in the service. It was as if I needed a change for a change. In the afternoon, I went to services at the great St. Paul's Cathedral. What a marvelous place. I thought, what more appropriate place than this for God to reveal himself to me, but it was not the place of God's choosing. Well, I didn't know what I wanted to do that evening, but I did know I did not want to go to another religious service. But I found myself at one, on Aldersgate Street, where someone was reading from Luther's preface to St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans. And at about a quarter before nine, as Luther was explaining the change that is wrought in one's heart through faith in Jesus Christ, I felt my own heart strangely warm. And I felt I did trust in Christ, in Christ alone for my salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had indeed forgiven me, even me, my sins. 